from two kids. This is going to be a little tutorial on just how to use Google Sheets to set up um, some data tables and make a graph for our Gibbs Free Energy Lab. What I'm going to show you is for our lab in class, but you could use these same techniques on your IA or anything else that you need to use Google Sheets or Excel to do. Um, so I'll kind of show you some of the features with that. Um, so for our Gibbs Free Energy Lab, I'm going to provide you with this um, Google Sheet in Google Classroom. So it has the four trials that you'll conduct. Um, it has a place where you'll record your temperature at each trial and the what you've calculated as the solubility product constant for each trial. So I'm going to input the data from my fake lab. Don't copy this data, one, because that's bad, but two, it's not real. So um, these are not numbers that you'll get in the lab. So I'm just going to type in some of my data, my fake data, um, for my temperature for each trial here, starting with the temperature. And then I'll move over to the solubility product constant. So I did have to do a little bit of calculations before I got to this point just to get this value. Um, and that's going to be on your lab worksheet. Okay, so when you get to this step, this is after you've done the lab and you're just processing your data. So once you have this, you can use Google Sheets to help you process your data to make things a lot faster. Rather than doing the same calculation over and over, what I'm going to do is we know that the graph of the inverse of the temperature graphed against the natural log of the solubility product constant will give us a straight line. Um, so that's what we want to convert these numbers into these numbers. And we're going to use Google Sheets to help us do that a lot faster. So if you're not familiar with this, all you have to do is hit equals. Um, and then you're going to type in some formula. So for this, we want the inverse of the temperature. So I'm going to say whatever is in this cell is going to be equal to 1 divided by this temperature for trial 1. And then I'm going to hit enter. Okay. And then for the rest of the trials, I just need to highlight what I did for that first cell. Go to the bottom right corner and see how the it turns into the crosshairs. You want to click and hold and then drag it down for the trials you want it to calculate that for. So now I have the inverse of the temperature for all of these. I'm going to do a similar thing to get the natural log of the solubility product constant. So again, I want to convert this number into the natural log of that number. So for this cell here, I'm going to hit equals. And then the formula is natural log, or ln, and then parentheses to say what you want to take the natural log of. And what I want to take the natural log of is my solubility product constant here that I calculated. Close your parentheses, hit enter, and it'll calculate that for you. Then I'm going to do the same trick here to do the other three trials. I'm going to hover over to the bottom right corner where I get the crosshairs, click and drag for all four trials, and then I have all the values. So that's your raw data, just converting this, what you collected from the lab, into the types of numbers you want that will actually give you a linear fit. So once you have that, you'll just click and hold, highlight these values, including the headings, because it'll just include it in your graph for you. So you want to highlight all of that data, including the headings, and then go to Insert, Chart. And it's going to actually, usually it's pretty good at figuring out what kind of chart you need. So here we have a scatter plot, and you can already see a pretty good relationship with our data. So we have the natural log of the solubility product, product constant on the y-axis and the inverse of the temperature in Kelvin on the x-axis. But there's a couple things you want to do to this graph before you turn it into me. So if you go over here, you want to go to Customize. And there's a few things, and the, the main one you need to do is to go to Series. Because remember, for your lab, you need to calculate the enthalpy and the entropy. And you're going to do that based on the equation from the line. So you're going to scroll down, and you need this trend line. So it's going to give you a trend line, but not only that, you have to go down here to Label. So click Trend Line, then go down to Label, and you want the equation. You need the numbers from this trend line. So if you hit Equation, it'll show you your y equals mx plus b linear equation. And you need this because you need the slope and you need the y-intercept to calculate your enthalpy and entropy. So this is really valuable here. You want that to show. And then it's also good to show the r squared. Um, basically, the way R squared works is the closer it is to 1, the more your data fits the trend line. So this is a really good value, 0.993. Hopefully, you'll get something like 0.9 something, which just means you had pretty good data that fit the trend.
Okay, so that's pretty much it. That's all you need to do um, for this lab. So just make sure you have title, your, your axes are labeled, but like I showed you, it does it automatically if you highlight things correctly. Um, make sure you have your equation, your R squared value. Now you'll use this equation to finish up the calculations on your worksheet. Um, but this is all you need to do for your Google Sheet to turn in on Google Classroom.